Hello, my name is Fox, and you're watching Den of Fools. Let's jump right in. The SoCal Open took place in Del Mar, USA, from the 21st to the 22nd of October 2023. The tournament had six rounds with 190 players and 1,051 games played. Arthur Two won the tournament with their Chaos Space Marines. James Carmona, also taking Chaos Space Marines, came second, with Ruben Zhao running Space Marines in third. Big congratulations to all these players, and big apologies for the poor pronunciation of their names. The winning Chaos Space Marine list does take some of the same choices as the one we saw in our previous tournament spotlight. There is a Chaos Lord who will be leading one of the big squad of Chosen like we saw in the other Chaos list. This one takes a matter of possession to lead the other unit. The, the unit they lead gets plus one to advance and charge, and a six plus feel no pain, both of which will be liked by the Chosen. In addition, once per phase you can deal one mortal wound to the squad to give the Master of Possession reroll hits and wounds with their psychic attacks. Speaking of which, they have a right of possession witch fire with two profiles. The focus profile makes two attacks out to 18 inches, hitting on freeze at strength 6, AP free, and damage free. It has anti psycho 2 plus, pistol, precision, and of course hazardous. The normal version is exactly the same, but it has strength 4 and damage 2. In melee, they make four attacks at strength 6, AP 1, and D3 damage. It also has anti psycho 2 plus. The attack has a good profile, especially if you are against a psycho. I think the mortal wound for the rerolls could be worth it if you were going to get a full round of shooting and melee against a psychic target. This list goes heavy on the cultists with two dark communes and two big squads of accursed cultists. The dark commune is essentially a command squad for cultists with a collection of mini characters. The characters all move 6 inch with a toughness free, a 6 plus save and 1 wound. The demagogue has the same profile but with 4 wounds. While the demagogue is alive, the unit they are leading have a 5 plus invulnerable save, which is very useful for the dark commune and the accursed cultists as they all have a 6 plus save. Once per game in the command phase, they can give the unit they are leading advance and charge and plus one to hit and wound when they make an attack. This should lead to a big term of damage from the accursed cultists. The mutants move six with toughness four and one wound and an OC of two, making them good for objectives. The torments have the same profile but with three wounds. The squad has a six plus feel no pain, which leads to some significant durability with the commune's five plus invul as well. To add to this, you can restore either three mutants or one torment to the unit in each player's command phase. With the durability buffs and constant respawn in, they will be reasonably difficult to take down. In melee, the mutants hit with two attacks, hitting on fours at strength four and one damage. The torments that make d6 plus two attacks, and also hit on fours at strength five, ap1 and damage two. When you use the communes plus one to hit and wound, they should be able to deal a lot of damage to all types of infantry. There are two squads of normal cultists, and three rhinos which I would imagine the Chosen and Noise Marines went in. Speaking of Noise Marines, the list takes two units of them. They have the standard marine profile, and after they have shot, you can select one enemy unit hit by the attacks, and they must take a battleshock test. The Sonic Blasters shoot out to 24 inches, and make three attacks hitting on threes at strength 5 and 1 damage. They also have Assault, which is useful if you ever need to advance them. The Blast Master is a heavy weapon which has two profiles. The Single Frequency shoots out to 48 inches, and makes three attacks hitting on fours at strength 9, AP2 and damage 3, which is a nice generalist profile. The Varied Frequency makes six attacks at 36 inches, hits on threes at strength 6, AP1 and damage 1. The Champion also has a Doom Siren, which is a strength 6 AP1 flamer equivalent. For 85 points per 5, they do deal some significant damage. We then see the obliterators we featured in the last spotlight, as well as some allied nerglings. The second place Chaos Space Marine list takes Abaddon himself as the Warlord. He has the standard Terminator profile, but with 9 wounds, a 5 plus leadership, and OC4. Each time Abaddon makes a dark pact, if you pass the leadership test, you get a CP on a roll of a 2 plus. With his 5 plus leadership, he shouldn't fail too many. This goes alongside his Warmaster ability, which allows him to choose one of three auras in your command phase. As seems the norm, all auras are 6 inches, but they do affect different targets. The first aura is reroll hits for all units, which is a very nice damage boost. He can give infantry and mounted units a 4 plus invul, or allow all units to reroll leadership and battleshock tests. I would say the reroll hit is more valuable for this list, as Abaddon and the Terminators he will be leading already have 4 plus invuls, but it is a very nice option to have if needed. At range, the Talon of Horus makes 4 attacks at 24 inches, with sustained hits 1. It hits on 2s at strength 5, AP 1 and damage 2. It may pick off the Odd Marine now and then. He does a lot more damage in melee, with the Talon and Drachnian resembling a strike and sweep mode. Both weapons have devastating wounds, and the Talon makes 14 attacks at strength 7, AP 3 and damage 1, which should be very good against 1 wound infantry. Drachnian makes 8 attacks at strength 14, AP 4 and damage 3, which should be good against pretty much anything. He has a very fierce and melee profile, I wouldn't imagine many things would want to be charged by him. We see the same dark commune to lead the accursed cultists, and then we have Hark and Will Claimer, 
who would have been leading the squad of Raptors. He has a standard jump pack marine profile with 5 wounds and a 4 plus symbol. While he is leading the unit, when he ends a charge move, you select one enemy unit within engagement range and roll a d6 for each model in the unit. For each 4 plus, you deal one mortal wound. This looks very good against big 10 or 20 man units. He also has a 6 inch aura, where any enemy unit within, below starting strength, must make a battle shock test in that part of your opponent's command phase. I think this is a very good ability, as you take the test before you score objectives. He chits him some significant damage, mainly in melee. The Hell's Bear makes a single attack at a 12 inch range, hitting on 2s at strength 8, AP free and damage free, which sustains its D3 and assault. If you get a lucky 6 on the hit roll you could do some big damage, but it is quite swingy. He is much more reliable in melee, with the spear making an extra attack with the same profile, but it also has the Lance keyword. The Herald's Talon makes 6 attacks at strength 5, AP 2 and damage 2 with precision. It should take down a few space marines each time he attacks. The Raptors he will be leading have an aura of minus 1 for battle sh shock and leadership tests for units within 6 inches, which works very well with Harkon's aura. They also force enemy units within engagement range to take a battle shock test at the start of the fight phase, which might stop your opponent using a stratagem. We have a lot of the same units as the other list, such as the Obliterators, Noise Marines and Standard Cultists. We do see a single Hell Brute, which only moves 6 inch, but has a toughness of 9 with 8 wounds. He gives all units within 6 inches both parts of their Dark Pact, rather than just one. I would imagine a lot of units were gathered around the Hellbrute and Abaddon to spread out as many buffs as possible. The third place Space Marines list was using the new Codex. Many of the data sheets are the same, and this Blood Angels list uses the tried and tested Gladius Task Force. We have an Apothecary Biologist as the Warlord, who is also equipped with the new Bolter Discipline, Fire Discipline. It has the same ability as before, sustain hits 1, and critical hits trigger on a 5+. Plus. The Apocryphy also gives the unit they are leading lethal hits, which will trigger on 5s. The Aggressors come armed with Bolt Storm Gauntlets, which make 3 Bolter shots out to 18 inches with twin length. They also chip in with D6 more shots with Blast from the Frag Storm. The 18 Bolt Storm shots and 6 D6 grenades combined with lethal and sustain hits on 5s should deal significant damage through sheer weight of wounds. They will then hit with 18 Power Fist attacks in melee, which should do big damage to most targets. With the Apocryphary attached, the unit is too big to go into the Land Raider, so I would imagine the Centurion Assault Squad were transported instead. They need the speed boost, and the Land Raider's Assault Ramp allows them to disembark and charge while after moving. They're now very cheap Tech Marine, would have been following around the vehicles we see in many lists, such as the Repulsor, Whirlwind, or perhaps the Land Raider itself. There is also a Storm Speed of Thunderstrike, which brings some very mobile anti-tank firepower. Its ability allows you to get plus one to wound for your whole army against a single monster or vehicle hit by it each shooting phase. If you have a big vehicle to target with Oath and shot at it with this first, the plus one to wound for the rest of your army will definitely help make up for the lost wound roll. We see many of the popular infantry choices with scouts, incursors and infiltrators. There are also two squads of inceptors, with one taking the plasma and one taking the bolters. We have a squad of eradicators for even more anti-tank, and finally we have the unit which makes this list Blood Angels, the Liberian Dreadnought. It has the standard Dreadnought profile with some interesting abilities. First of all, it has a 6 inch aura, which gives all friendly units a 5 plus feel no pain versus mortals and psychic attacks. In addition, at the end of the movement phase, one psychic can use its ability. You roll a d6, and on a 1 you take d3 mortals. On a 2 plus, you can select one friendly infantry unit within 12 inch, and remove it from the battlefield, and set it up not within 9 inch of enemy models. This is very useful, and it's perhaps how the aggressors with the Apocryphary were quickly transported across the table. Unsurprisingly, the Space Marines are the most played faction with 18.42%. Tyranids are in second with 10%, followed by Aldari in third with 7.89%. It takes our resident stats guru and Ultramarine fanboy Fearless Fox many hours to collect all the data. It would be great if you could show your appreciation by liking and sharing the video, it really helps us with the god algorithm of YouTube. We have grouped the win rates by colour, with the key at the bottom of the screen. The two Admech players top the win rates with 66.7%. They are followed by the tournament first and second place finisher, Chaos Space Marines, with a win rate of 60.8%. Chaos Demons are the first faction in green, with a win rate of 58.8%, followed by Tau on 58.5%. The third most popular faction, Eldari, are just above the Goldilocks zone, on 55.8%. The World Eaters get a win rate of 53.7%, with the Thousand Sons on 52.8%. We then see a large number of factions with a 50% win rate. The third place finisher and most popular faction, Space Marines, get a win rate of 46.1%, with the second most popular Tyranids 
on 44.3%. The tournament winner did declare as word bearers, giving them a 100% win rate. The second place player declared as Black Legion, helping them to their 83.3% win rate. The tournament third place finisher and joint most popular chapter, the Blood Angels, lead the way for the Loyalists, with a win rate of 59.6%. The Dark Angels come next, with a win rate of 55.6%, followed by the other joint most popular faction, the Black Templars, on 52.3%. The Space Wolves are the only chapter in yellow, with a win rate of 45.8%. There are six chapters in red, who only played one or two games. If you enjoyed our content, please subscribe, check out one of the videos on screen, and consider using our affiliate links in the description. Thank you for watching.